My parents gave me everything. They gave me more than I could have ever asked for. I will never be able to repay them back. Are you a rich man? What do you mean rich? What do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot of oh. money in the bank. This is such a trick. Hope you appreciate this because I wanted to take you to this nice location to shoot this video. Look at that. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> I'm alive. Nearly died there, but yeah, I'm okay. Let's do this video. Yeah. Hopefully it's not too loud here. So we're eight months into our travels now and we're currently in Sayulita, Mexico. The waves are crashing behind me. I hope it's not too loud, but I just thought it's such a beautiful location. I didn't want to not do it here. We've been absolutely loving Mexico so far. Such a beautiful country, so much beautiful scenery. The food is amazing. The people are so welcoming and kind. But yeah, eight months traveling is a long time to travel and we've still got another four months to go. And one question we keep getting asked is, how do you afford it? Do you have rich parents? And how much money have they actually given you? So I'm a medical doctor and I worked for the NHS in the UK for about two and a half years. I felt pretty miserable working for the NHS. So I decided to take some time off, which I call a mini retirement. And I traveled around Southeast Asia for about six months. After my six months of traveling, I returned feeling refreshed, but still I went back to work for the NHS, still a bit lost, wasn't really enjoying myself. And I kind of wanted, wanted to continue my travels, but work at the same time. Luckily, I had a friend working in Australia who was also a UK doctor, and he recommended that I come to Australia. He helped me get a job, and then I ended up working there for about two and a half years. So that's a fair amount of time to work, fair amount of time to save up some cashola. But we did get some help, and I'll go exactly into what that help was very shortly. What we really had to change was our mindset. Your Money or Your Life by Vicky Robin. So I can't remember who recommended this book to me, but it's an incredible book. Basically the book emphasizes that money isn't just a tool for buying things, but it's intrinsically linked to the amount of life energy you spend to earn it. Life energy is basically the time and effort is required to make the money. By viewing money in this way, we can rethink the way we spend and make sure that the way we spend it is aligning with our values. So your money is your life energy. And the best thing I got from this book was their recommendation to start tracking your money. So I have a note on my phone for every single month, every single expenditure I make and every little bit of amount of income I make as well. And it looks somewhat like this. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but I'll do a screen grab so you can see it later. It's all divided into different categories. So we've got bills, books, charity, car, eating out, just anything that I could possibly spend my money. And every single cent I spend, I put it in my notes app. Whenever I'm paid, I put it in the notes app. It may look weird to people because I'll literally get my phone at the cashiers as soon as I've bought something and put it in my phone. Or if I'm at a busy bar, I will literally get my phone out and do the same thing. Then I put it all in the spreadsheet and work out if I'm net positive or net negative for that month. If I have any leftovers, I'll invest into my future, into index funds or some, a little bit of cryptocurrency. And then I put it directly into what I call the travel fund. Where the value of this book lies is in the tracking. You really get to work out where your money is going and if that aligns with your values. So example, if you're spending money on clothes and actually realize you don't really value clothes that much, they're not that important to you. Maybe there's another category in your life for which you're not spending that much. Take some money out of one category and put it into the other. And I highly recommend the book, but if you can't be bothered to read it, then just try the tracking thing for a week. Even better, I'd do it for a month and just see where your money is actually going. And actually I've realized I don't really have that many outgoings. I have a piece of shit car, which I got for like three and a half grand from a friend from work. And that's three and a half thousand AUD, which is a lot less in USD or pounds. I don't really buy stuff if I can avoid it. And my friends often joke about me being a tight ass. I didn't have Uber on my phone for the longest time. I have downloaded it now, but they still take the piss out of me for that. And it's not like I don't do things. I still go out, we go to events, we go out for dinner. I'll spend money on flights when I'm going back home to the UK to visit my family. I don't really buy any fancy clothes and I kind of spent as little as I can on camera equipment like this one I'm shooting on. Basically, I just spent the minimum 
that I could to still make good videos. And I think my frugality comes from childhood potentially, but actually it kind of comes from a mindset shift of spending money on things that align with me. But traveling for a year is a long ass time, right? Surely that's expensive. And I'm not gonna act like I didn't have help. So how much money did my parents give me to travel for one year? Zero dollars. I'm a grown ass man. I can't be asking mummy and daddy for money. We're not poor, we're not rich. We probably sit somewhere in the middle class in the UK, which I appreciate is still very prosperous compared to a lot of places in the world. Half the world's population live on less than $2 USD per day. So I appreciate that just being in the UK in the middle class in the UK is already in the top tiers of the world. And $2 a day is actually freaking crazy. That is literally less than a McDonald's Happy Meal. It blows my mind. But that doesn't mean they didn't give me anything. In fact, they gave me everything. Everything I do, everything I am is because of them. As a child, they fed me, they clothed me, they put a roof over my head, they helped me get a good education, they take me on family holidays every year. And as I get older, I really realize how much they've sacrificed for me. As I get to the age where I'm starting thinking of having children myself, they essentially sacrifice their 20s, 30s and 40s to raise me. They had to go to work every single day to earn money, to raise a family. And, and it's not like they worked all the time, but they did work a lot. And I will never be able to pay them back. All the time that they gave me, all the time that they sacrificed in their youth to, to raise me, all that, time that they were, all that time that they were at work, saving away to make money for the family, I will never ever be able to repay them. The best I can do is pay it forward to my own children and potentially put them in a granny flat when I do end up getting my own property. Sorry, mum and dad. I won't put you in a nursing home though. I was fortunate enough to go to university, get a higher education. And yes, I got student loans from the UK government, which I'm still paying off now. And I'm not gonna pretend that mummy and daddy didn't bail me out when I was a struggling student eating pot and noodle. But what they really gave me was the right conditions to learn a skill that would earn me money for the rest of my life. The story of teaching a man to fish comes to mind. But then I worked and I saved and I worked and I saved. And I appreciate I'm in a high earning profession, especially in Australia. A Domino's pizza delivery driver is gonna to have to work a lot more hours to save up the funds to do a trip like this. Fun fact, in my first year as a junior doctor, I was actually earning less than a Domino's pizza delivery driver, which was less than 14 pounds an hour. And the money in Australia was for sure a big driver me going there to work. And then I just prioritized my spending and my saving according to my values. And everyone's different. I have a friend I was speaking to back home. He spent 8,000 pounds to take his mum and his partner to Disney World for a week. And I was sitting there thinking, I could literally travel in Southeast Asia for eight months with 8,000 pounds. Five years ago, when I did my first solo trip around Southeast Asia, I did it for six months and I spent 6,000 pounds. That's 1,000 pounds a month. That's $1,300 per month, USD. And it wasn't a luxury trip, I was saying in hostel dorms, but that's pretty much how it cost me. But there's another person in my life who's been critical in me being able to take this year off work to travel the world. Again, I think a huge component of a successful relationship is having similar values and very importantly, similar financial values. If your partner's into buying fancy cars and jewelry and you're into wild camping and online discount coupons, it's never gonna work. And that's why I'm so grateful to have found my partner who has the same values as me. One of the first things we bonded over was a love for long-term travel. And we both independently solo traveled before we met each other. And in fact, we actually started planning this trip even before we were officially together. So we've been saving for years to do this. And I want to share a story which kind of highlights our similar values. So I was speaking to a friend last year and we were talking about how much engagement rings cost. And he told me how much he paid. I went home and I told my now fiance how much he had spent on an engagement ring. She turned around and said to me, if you ever spend that much on an engagement ring, I will be so angry at you. But I wanted to propose to her. So I was in a bit of a predicament. She didn't want an expensive ring. I didn't really know what to get her. So I spoke to my mum and she got out some old jewelry that she had from many years ago, some family heirlooms and such. And she basically said, you can give her one of these. Now we have no idea how much they were worth but it meant that I didn't have to go out and buy my own engagement ring for her. I took the ring back to Australia. We went and stayed in somewhere very cute. I proposed, she said yes. yes. And the money I saved from not buying an expensive ring, I just gave directly to her for her travels and our travels together, which she much, much preferred than any shiny object. But that's her and everyone's different. And I'm grateful to have a partner who shares the same values and 
I think that's why we're together. So I've actually got a bit of a fun fact for you. The only reason diamond rings are used for engagement rings is from some crazy successful marketing campaign in the 1930s by a jewelry brand called De Beers. Now, after World War II, diamond sales slumped. Basically, they just advertised diamond rings as the thing to have for an engagement. And in fact, there was actually an advert which the slogan was, how can you make two months salary last forever? Before the marketing campaign, 10% of engagement rings were diamond rings. After the marketing campaign, 80% of engagement rings worldwide were diamond rings. That's just insane to me. So in summary, I didn't get any money from my parents. I'm not a trustafarian, a wealthy young person who adopts an alternative lifestyle, incorporating elements from non-Western cultures. But at the same time, I'm not gonna pretend that I didn't have a leg up at the start of my life. I was born in the right country, born to the right parents, was given the opportunity to get a higher education, and I appreciate there's many, many people in the world who do not have access to that. My parents gave me everything. They gave me more than I could have ever asked for. I will never be able to repay them back. And I'm so grateful for it. And I know they watch these videos every week and they're supporting me. And I love you so much. Thank you. <laughs> but I still had to earn my freedom. I still had to work for many years to save up enough money to travel. And I'm really glad it wasn't just given to me because I think if it was given to me, I wouldn't appreciate it as much. There's a great book called Vagabonding, which I also highly recommend. And the author Rolf Potts basically says, travelers who solely rely on inherited wealth or trust funds may miss out on personal growth that comes from self-reliance and effort needed to fund their travels. Earning the resources to travel will lead to a richer, more authentic experience as it helps you develop a mindset of self-sufficiency and adaptability. When you earn your travel funds, the journey feels more meaningful as you've made conscious sacrifices to make it happen. And honestly, I couldn't agree more. I checked my priorities, I checked what I valued, I made sure what I was doing, what I was spending aligned with those values. And I was lucky enough to find a partner who also shares the same values. People think that long-term travel is just for the rich, but I've met many a traveler with a lot lower income than me who are traveling for a lot longer than me as well. Work out what you value and align that with your life. Position making rich? I don't, I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. I have to show you this crazy sunset, it's beautiful.